Scientists may have solved a huge mystery about the early universe that has been puzzling scientists since JWST's first observations. Basically, scientists observed that early galaxies were much larger and more luminous than expected. And this made them question everything from what they knew about star formation to theories about the early universe. But now, scientists think they may have found an answer that doesn't break the standard model of cosmology. Let's dive into why JWST is so good at observing the early universe, what the early universe looked like, the crisis in cosmology that surrounded these large early galaxies, and what these scientists uncovered to solve the mystery, as well as the questions that we still have. I'm Swapna Krishna, and today on Ad Astra, we're going to talk about the early universe. JWST is incredibly good at observing the early universe because well, that's what it was designed for. It's an infrared optimized telescope, while Hubble is optimized for visible and UV light, though Hubble does have the capability to see in some near infrared wavelengths. Infrared is important because as light has traveled through the universe, as the universe is expanding, the wavelength has stretched. It's shifted into the longer or the red end of the spectrum, what you may know as redshift. That means to see the earliest light of the universe, the light of the first stars and galaxies, we can't just be observing the universe in visible light because the wavelength has stretched into the infrared. JWST is optimized for near and mid-infrared observation with NIRCAM, the near-infrared camera, and MIRI, the mid-infrared instrument. And it is very, very good at observing these wavelengths of light. Remember that looking through a telescope is like looking back in time because of the time that light takes to reach us. So when we look really far into the universe, we're observing how the universe was in the distant past. With previous telescopes, scientists could observe early galaxies. Hubble allowed observation of UV-dominant early galaxies, but it wasn't sensitive enough in the infrared wavelengths to pick up the more distant galaxies. Spitzer, a now-retired infrared-optimized telescope, which may be getting serviced and brought back online, check out my video on the possible Spitzer Resurrector mission. But Spitzer was able to detect some of this light, but because it wasn't nearly as sensitive as JWST, scientists had trouble distinguishing sources of light, and things kind of blurred together. But JWST has blown all expectations out of the water. It has shown unprecedented ability to focus light from distant targets, what's called point spread function. It's actually twice as sharp as design requirements, so it's the best telescope we've ever had for this purpose. And that's why JWST has been revolutionizing our understanding of the early universe since its deployment. It's found all of these, quote, little red dots, early galaxies that are boggling the minds of scientists because there are so many and they're so massive. Keeping all of this straight and diving into these studies to try and understand what was going on in the early universe is a lot of work. That's why I find comfort in a lot of my morning rituals, having a coffee, taking a brisk walk, and now I have a new one, drinking AG1. AG1 is the sponsor of this video. I'm really enjoying AG1 for a lot of reasons. It supports my immune system and gut health, which is so important as I get older. It provides foundational nutrition. It's your multivitamin, pre and probiotics, antioxidants, and more, all in one. There are so many days when I just sit down on my computer and my brain is absolutely swimming with all of the studies I need to go through and news reports I need to read. My AG1 habit helps with focus and energy and that keeps my mornings on track. And it's easy, that's the key. I don't have to think about it. I can just use the canister and scoop to whip it up. And no, I'm starting off my day right by supporting my health with quality ingredients. And it actually does really taste good. If you're interested in starting your mornings like I do, go to drinkag1.com slash adastra or scan the QR code on screen to get a free bottle of vitamin D3 and K2, as well as five AG1 travel packs with your first subscription. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. So then, what's this mystery? Well, when scientists first started observing the universe with JWST, they started uncovering the most distant galaxies we've ever seen. And many of them were big, 
much bigger than was theorized by our understanding of the early universe and Lambda CDM, or the standard model of cosmology. The issue was that these galaxies were too massive and too bright. And if all of that luminous matter came from stars, then it was clear we had seriously misunderstood star formation in the early universe. Here's what we think we know about the early universe. After the Big Bang, the universe was incredibly hot, a thick, hot soup of subatomic particles. As the universe began to cool down, the particles began to combine into the first ionized atoms. This happened during the era of recombination around 240,000 to 300,000 years after the Big Bang. And this is really the earliest light we can observe because before that, the universe was opaque and light couldn't freely travel through it. This is when CMB, or Cosmic Microwave Background, formed, and this is the first light of the universe that we can see. But then came the Dark Ages. This was the universe after CMB and the era of recombination, but before the first stars and galaxies formed. We think these began forming at around 400 million years after the Big Bang. The first stars in the universe formed out of clumps of hydrogen gas. The clumps basically grew and grew until they were dense enough to collapse and form the first stars. These were likely large, massive stars, so they were gravitationally attracted to one another to form the first star clusters, then form the first galaxies, then the first galaxy clusters. Scientists use galaxy brightness as a proxy to estimate their mass and the number of stars, and these galaxies were way too massive and had way too many stars. So then, the theory goes that the first galaxies would be filled with large massive stars, but they'd be relatively small and dim because it would take time for galaxies to accumulate enough matter to grow larger and to grow brighter, but that's just not what scientists were finding. In February of 2023, scientists pinpointed six different galaxies that formed in the universe's first 700 million years. All six were up to 100 times more massive, according to the amount of stars that they must have contained, than our theories predicted. They were so massive, in fact, that the six galaxies had more mass among them than there should have been available in the universe at that time. Something was seriously wrong, either with the observations, or our theories, or our assumptions. We've been chipping away at this mystery, finding different answers to reconcile this problem. One is starburst. Basically, stars aren't forming at an even rate, but sometimes it happens all at once. That will make a galaxy much, much brighter for a short period of time. Another was refining our simulations to have a higher resolution in order to better predict the pattern and rate of star formation. And now, this new study helps us unlock another piece of the puzzle. The answer came courtesy of a study in the astronomical journal led by UT Austin graduate student Catherine Chwarowski. Basically, the answer to these galaxies having too many stars and therefore being too bright and too massive is, well, it's not because of stars. It's because of black holes. JWST has already shown us that massive black holes existed in the early universe far earlier than we thought. It was basically the same problem as the early galaxies. It takes time for black holes to gather enough matter to form, and it takes time for them to consume enough matter to become big. The question was, could they just form large with enough collapsing matter to just create a black hole at the beginning that was really, really massive? Or were these the product of stellar-sized black holes merging and growing more rapidly than we thought? Evidence has pointed to the former, basically giant clouds collapsing into massive black holes in the early universe. And this appears to be the answer to the massive early galaxy problem as well. The research team looked at galaxies from the SEERS, or Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Survey, which targets a sliver of the sky to provide parallel observations from multiple instruments supported by data from a similar candle survey with Hubble. This helps scientists have multiple points of data to see distant redshifted galaxies and pinpoint distinct sources of light from distant objects. The team went through the SEERS data looking for redshifted galaxies, focusing on those that were at a Z value greater than four. Z corresponds to the fractional change in wavelength of light and is a number value for redshift. For a reference, a Z value of about five corresponds to light emitted about a million years after the Big Bang. 
A z value of 9 is light emitted when the universe was about half a billion years old. What they found, basically, is that many galaxies that appeared way too bright and were puzzling scientists actually had accreting massive black holes within them. We can't directly detect black holes, but when they start consuming matter at a high rate, they begin to gather dust and gas around them. This is called an accretion disk outside the event horizon of a black hole. As black holes consume matter, the friction in this gas and dust becomes incredibly luminous, and that light is what we're detecting. When scientists removed these galaxies with black holes from their data, the rest did conform to the expectations of the standard model. This does not completely solve the mystery of the early universe, though. There are still a lot of questions. We still need to figure out why are there so many more massive black holes than we expect. And the study doesn't explain why there are also more galaxies than expected, either. There are still mysteries we need to solve, and hopefully JWST will operate for a long time and continue to give us more insight into the early universe. And that is just about all I have to say about the early universe and the solution to this cosmic mystery. Thank you for watching. I am Swapna Krishna, and this is Ad Astra.